Hey guys, I want to talk to you about Original Grain. Uh, OriginalGrain.com slash congrats. That's what you go to. You go to that link and you get to get ill as shit. Look, we watch, look, we like, we watch, look, that's ill as shit. We like to watch this like this is the Burlwood. And um, look, they got another one here too that's a little bit more hefty. Oh, and that's nice with the, the darkness. This one's a little bit light. This one's a little bit darkness, depending on how you're feeling, right? Badass. Maybe classy kind of guy, right? And this one comes with a guitar pick. Look, it's all made of like really nice stuff. Uh, and we love it here at Congratulations. You know, I'm I'm into watches. You also got the understated. No, that's what we call This one you wear if you're British, right? Yeah, absolutely understated with a suit or something like that. And um, they also re up the glasses. The sunglasses sold out immediately with this code, originalgrain.com slash congrats. And use code congrats for a total of 30% off. Now, let me tell you something. They're already doing 20% off because of Black Friday. All right? So, whoopsie daisy. You want more off? You use our code congrats. And you get, uh, that's a total of 30% off. All right? Uh, they're running a 20% off Black Friday deal right now. But use the link and you'll get 10% off. That's 30% off. Uh, that's the highest markdown you're going to get for the holidays. Originalgrain.com slash congrats. And use the code congrats. For a total of 30% off. And that is how you're going to be styling. Oh, the sunglasses are the, actually the illest ones. They're, they're my favorites. I use them and I wear them out. You know, sometimes I don't want to be too fashionable with the sunglasses and the thing. But sometimes you want to be that fashionable. So get them all before they sell out. Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of Congratulations. And three, two, that's what one fire does every time. And we like that, so it's all good. We only want to do things that we like in life, right? But sometimes we got to do things that we don't like in life because we're adults, and that's okay. But it's just kind of where we're at, you know, in Adult Nation. Uh, and this is Adult Nation. But, uh, yeah, we are off and running. We are off and running. We did a uh, – I've got new dates up. New dates up. They're on sale right now. We have uh, – well, let me pull them up. I should have already pulled them up, but I didn't. Uh, but we – well, cause, so, okay, so here's what we're doing, actually. Um, we're doing – uh, San Diego and Portland, and you know all that. Seattle, that actually sold out. We're going to add another one. It's huge, huge theater. I, who knew in Seattle your boy was up there just fucking keeping them seats warm? Uh, did they, they they make chairs out there in Seattle? Good. Let's keep them warm. Hey, invite Crystalia. Cool. Oh, yeah, we'll keep the chairs warm. Oh, but they don't stay warm fully. Why? Because they're standing up during some of it. Ah, uh, we get it. We get it. What's that all about? standing up because they can't because hey dude does your boy keep the seats warm or hot right you keep them warm because the people sit down but also keep they must be hot because they keep standing up you know what i'm getting at lakeland florida has been rescheduled to january 26th jacksonville florida has been rescheduled to january 28th wait that can't be right right that's not right right 26th and 28th is that right all right well whatever uh, I got to text my uh, my guy here because I don't know if that's right, but that's weird that there's a day in between. Um, ask Enrique right now, yeah? Um, uh, and then San Antonio, Texas, February 3rd. Sugarland, Texas, February 4th. February 5th, New Orleans, Providence, Rhode Island, New York, uh, Chicago. But the new ones here are Kansas City, Missouri. Oh, wait, was that new? Yeah, that's new. Uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Austin, Texas, March 25th. Minneapolis, April 1st. Columbus, Ohio, Cincinnati, May 6th and 7th, and then May 19th, Boise, Idaho. We're loving it, crystalia.com. Uh, get the tickets. Make sure the seats don't stay cold. Let's warm them up. But, uh, yeah, wow, that's so obnoxious to say that. Um, so go to crystalia.com and get that. We also got the merch. It's great for the holidays. Go to crystalia.com. Get your merch. Keep people warm with that uh, Join the Cult hoodie and all that. We got new flannels coming out. It's ridiculous, dude. Life rips. Uh, and make sure you show your loved one that life rips over the holidays. 
Uh, Black Friday, we're having a crazy, uh, ridiculous sale. I probably am saying that a little prematurely. No, maybe not, right? Maybe not. Get ready for Black Friday. Um, yeah. So, uh, oh, and subscribe. You guys, you know, we love you. Subscribe. We've been stuck at five. It's a conspiracy. YouTube's got a conspiracy against your boy. That's great. Hey, hey, there's a conspiracy. Chris is walking in a room at YouTube studio. Hey, oh, but it's a conspiracy. He's stuck at 596. Dude, what's going on? He's got two hit shows. Why are they stuck at 596, dude? Because YouTube's got a conspiracy against him. It's all good. But we figured it out. And that's what we do in life. We figure things out. Um, I was in Denver and Cheyenne. Uh, and that's, a, and that's amazing, dude. Uh, I was in Denver and Cheyenne, and it was absolutely beautiful. Uh, let me tell you something, dude. Okay, first of all, Denver, unbelievable. 4,500 of you came out. Love you all. That is a crazy, crazy view from the stage. I had the best seat in the house. Belco Theater, killed it, all right? Absolutely fun. Had Lulu, had Lenochi, and uh, and did the show, and it was absolutely unbelievable. Now, let me tell you something else, too. We got the tour report up. Uh, on the other YouTube channel, and uh, we we showing you we talk you know we, we showed you about the the de- the um what do you call it the Denver show that one's up now and then we're putting up the Cheyenne one but the uh, the the guy who came to see me was a real man dude Donnie what's his name Donnie what was his name the guy who does makes these uh, tomahawks on uh, TikTok look him up Donnie something uh, and uh, he'll just be like. He's a great guy. He showed up and I was like, this guy's a fucking man. He's like Jason Momoa of Jason Momoa. He's like the real life Jason Momoa where it's like, okay, I buy this guy being in a way you're like, I buy him being this sexy because in a way he's actually more sexy than Jason Momoa, even though girls would pretend that, you know, Jason Momoa is more sexy, but he's not though. This guy's like the real deal. Jason Momoa, he's out there doing the haka performative and all the shit. This dude Donnie somebody, whatever the fuck, came to see me in Denver. The dude's got like millions of TikToks followers. And he'll just be like, you want me to make a tomahawk? I'll make a tomahawk. And he'll just make it where he is. He's like, you want me to make a Swiss Army knife? I'll just make it right now. Here, I got a tree. Let me just break some bark off. And then whittles a fucking knife out of it, whittles another knife out of it, and then makes a fucking Swiss Army knife with those two reg- with those two wood knives. Uh, you know who I'm talking about. He's very big on... Uh, on um, uh, a uh, TikTok, but he came to see me uh, in Denver, and it was very cool that um, you know, real men are out there. He said it. He said it, dude. He said it. But uh, I love Denver, dude. I really love Denver, man. We were staying at a hotel that was awesome. I have no idea what it was called because I'm absolutely sometimes uh, you know I just go where where they point. And uh, this hotel was like the Maynard or some shit. Wow, I don't know the name. This is going to be the episode where I just don't know anything's names, and that's fine. I don't even give a fuck. Dude, you're just going to be, it's going to be, this is the podcast based off feeling. You're going to feel what I'm saying. I'm not even going to try. And I'll tell you what, I've been off the gabapentin. All right? And I'm not taking Ginkgo Biloba. I get it. And I'm forgetting names. But forget it. It doesn't matter. I was in a hotel. It was really nice. I was in Denver. And, um... It had like a coffee shop attached to it, a bar attached to it, like a fucking place where you could buy shirts and silly putty. And then it had a market that was attached to it. And uh, and then the in the market uh, that morning, they were playing bingo and there were two trans women fucking playing bingo from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Bingo the whole time, dude. So that's the kind of fun I have, dude. And those are the kind of places that I stay at. So don't ever say I don't stay at fucking popping places because I stay at popping places because I was doing, I was at a place where you could get coffee, beer, and silly putty and also play bingo with some trans people. And that's the kind of popping places that I like to stay at, dude. Um, And I went with David Sullivan and we were just popping around, lurking around. I got fucking, uh, you know, look, it's like I bought silly putty for Calvin. I bought three silly putties for Calvin. I uh, FaceTimed him. I told him I got a present. And he said, what is it going to be? And I said, silly putty. And he said, silly putty. And I said, yup. And he said, what is that? And I told him, brought it home because he loves Play-Doh. I didn't know how hard silly putty is, dude. Silly putty is absolutely, um, it's too hard to pull. And then I didn't have a newspaper to even use it. So like good dad, but also bad dad. Because I didn't know how to, I didn't know how to, I didn't, I couldn't get, you know how you put the silly putty, you roll it on the newspaper and then all of a sudden it shows what's on the newspaper. 
couldn't do that with regular printer paper. Printed out like my fucking, uh, you know, some some recovery shit. I'm trying to do it on that, and it's not working. And it's also good dad, but bad dad, you know. Um, but yeah, Denver was uh, absolutely amazing. Not too cold. Ate at a place called, uh, well, don't know the name. Woo, dude. What was the fucking name of this goddamn place, man? I need ginkgo, frinkin' biloba. Anyway, I ate at this place, and they had the oju sandwiches, dude. I'm done with the Oju's, okay? I'm done with the Oju sandwiches. I don't... You know me, dude. If you know me, if you know me, and if you've listened to every episode, why don't I like Oju's? Because I want the shit to be done when it comes out. If the juice belongs on the sandwich, put the juice on the sandwich before you bring it to me. Right? It's not ketchup. It's not sauce. They try to act like it's sauce. Dude, it's like... Thinner than water. And so they give me the... So they're like, what do you want? So I get the turkey sandwich with the fucking... I got the Thanksgiving dinner sandwich, which is like... They're trying to sandwichify everything and it's fine. But I say, you know what? Leave out the cranberry sauce because it fucks up everything in Thanksgiving, right? Doesn't it? Because it's too sweet, right? What's that? Dessert? Oh, I got stuffing and turkey and also uh, potatoes and shit on my plate. And you're just going to fuck it all up with some sweet shit, dude. Really? Give it to me later. You might as well put a fucking chocolate cake next to my next to my dark meat. Makes no sense, dude. That's dessert. It's not bad. It just doesn't go. Okay? So I got the, the, the Thanksgiving dinner one, dipped it in the au jus, decided, you know what? I'm not an au jus guy. Put it to the side, ate the sand sandwich. Honestly, ate the sandwich dry as shit. And that's how real I am, dude. That's how fucking real I am, dude. And then they said, I said, can I have mayo instead? And they said, oh, do you, I swear to God, they said, do you want cranberry mayo? And I say, hey, you're a cranberry pusher, man. I want regular mayo. Now that's a sauce, right? So I like to control how much of that substance that belongs on my sandwich. But I, au jus? It sh- that's juice. That should already be in the shits. And we all know it. We all deep down know it. So I ate at this place. It was great. That's three places I've told you about. Don't know the names of them. That's the place that I stayed at, the other sandwich place, and then the Donnie guy from TikTok that was a real man. I need to pay more attention to life. I need to pay more attention to people who come up to me and say hi. I need to, I need to pay more attention to where I am, and I need to pay more attention to where I'm going. But isn't that just everybody? Isn't that just everybody, right? I'm waiting in line and I'm at the fucking coffee shop at the place that I stayed at. And this guy turns over and he says, hey, man, big fan. I said, oh, thanks a lot. I really appreciate it. He said, I didn't realize you look so badass. Whoopsie daisy, I'm yatted up, dude. Whoopsie daisy, I'm all yatted up. I didn't realize I was yatted up. I saw a picture of myself and I'm fucking yatted up, dude. Right? I got one here. I got one here. I got a tattoo. Every which way you look at me, I'm yatted the fuck up. Unless maybe you see me from behind. I don't have any from behind, but I'm getting them. Right? Made me feel good. You know, I don't know why every guy kind of wants to be badass. It's silly, right? Because we're not. We watch Batman and shit. The Dark Knight, whatever, with uh, the good actor in it. What's his name? Uh, Robert Pattinson. Got it. And uh, we're like, that's probably how I would be the Batman that I would kind of be. But you wouldn't, dude. You'd just fall down and slip and shit. Imagine you were Batman. You'd fucking die immediately, right? But you watch it and you're like, dude, see, I'd, you're watching this shit and you're like, see, that's the kind of Batman I'd be. I'd stick to the shadows, right? Not the other Batman didn't really stick to the shadows. Robert Pattinson, Batman, he sticks to the shadows. So I, I get it. I would kind of stick to the shadows. Dude, how lost would you get as Batman? That's me. Did Denver then went to Cheyenne. And uh, did a trip from Denver to Cheyenne. And let me tell you something. We got a Sprinter van and it was fucking dope. Because you can get the Sprinter vans that all have the seats facing the same way. And then you can also get the fucking elevated version where the seats are facing each other. And you can have a real conversation. That jumps up the time that you could have from nice, from goose to silly goose. Dude, this shit was awesome. When you're staring at each other driving, 
Dude, it's like an hour. By the way, I didn't know Cheyenne was an hour away from Denver. Also, Cheyenne, where is it? Also, Cheyenne, the capital of Wyoming. Also, not big enough to be a capital of anything. Cheyenne, how many people do you have in it? 58,000. Not enough. How many people were at the show? 1,000. That's one fifty-eighth of the people knew that Chris D'Elia was in town. That's absolutely insane, dude. I thought 1,000 was a little bit small of a show, and then I realized, your boy, 158th of the fucking population there, he's moving up. Too low. <laughs> Played for Cheyenne. And uh, let me tell you something, dude. That's a black stripper name. And it's all good, right? Because it's the whitest place in the world, but it's a black stripper name, Cheyenne. Like she just felt like she's the one that found it. Hey, y'all, we're going we gonna to post up right here. Get your tents out. Hey, y'all, look at this shit. Shit, man. It's open. It's, it, this place sure is open. Shit. Hey, y'all, get the tents Bring them yaks over here. Shit. Look how open this is. Post up right here. This going to be Cheyenne. I'm the mayor, bitch. Um, so, yeah. And then now there's 58,000 people there. And it is a place. I did not know that Cheyenne was a place where America, the American government, can fire nukes anywhere in the world. In Cheyenne, Wyoming. Also, the reason is open space. If the bomb goes off, only 58,000 people die. And, you know, that's a lot, but it's not, you know, it's not like you wouldn't launch nukes from New York, New York. Start spreading the nukes. Um... You want to be a part of it. Nuke York, Nuke York. So fucking dumb. I want to wake up in a city that's permanently asleep. Um. So, yeah, we did Cheyenne and man, the, the ride, the ride was so elevated in a, in a time, you know, and the, the, not elevated. It wasn't actually physically elevated. It was so elevated. The time was so elevated because we were all looking at each other and that tour report, dude, we were doing all sorts of jokes. The fucking driver on the sprint sprinter van, we, we would get too loud and he would fuck put up the partition, dude. That's the most disrespectful shit you can do. That's so disrespectful to be having such a good time. And then all of a sudden you notice that partition, like the driver's just like this fucking God damn it. And clicks the partition and the partition goes up and he can't see us. Uh, but we were having a good time and then got to Cheyenne. Uh, you know, thank you for coming out, Cheyenne. I didn't realize it was a, an hour away from Denver, which means that if it was an hour away from Denver, what could have happened was all the people from Cheyenne could have went to the Denver show, even though they wouldn't have fit because it was almost sold out. But that's still, you know. Um, uh, well, Cheyenne, dude. Jeffrey Star came out to see me, uh, which was very cool. Tall, tall drink of water. Um, not sure the pronouns that Jeffrey likes to use, so I'll stay off it. But uh, you know, heavy on the makeup. He looks good. She, I don't know. Um, he, he looks good. And uh, Google the pronouns, you know, before I get canceled again. And um, but uh, good. Good, good person there. Had a good time. Was with uh, two two women that uh, I've met before through the merch company, and um, he was great, dude. It was awesome. I was like, "Did you guys have fun?" I was. I say that to people. Did I have fun? The two women were like, "Yeah." And Jeffrey Star goes like this. Mm. And I was like, "Playing it close to the chest, dude." Now I'm insecure. Want them to like me. Want everyone to like me. Sit deeper. Walk in a room, and I think that people don't like me. I got to win them over. Problem with childhood. Why is it? This is who I am. Been delving into therapy about it. Walk in a room immediately, think I gotta win people over. Why? Doesn't matter. Every room. Sad. But. My bag. Uh, everyone's got their bag of shit, isn't it? Everyone got their bag of shit, isn't it? Um, 
And so met Jeffree Star and Jeffree Star. My cameraman was a big fan of Jeffree Star. He's like, I get a picture. He's like, okay. He kind of looks like Jeffree Star, to be honest. Um, and uh, yeah, man. Oh, oh, you know what happened in Cheyenne? I met uh, a sheriff. You know what I'm saying? Like that actually happened. How hilarious is that? I bet you can't go to Cheyenne without meeting a sheriff or somebody that used to be a sheriff. Well, I used to be a sheriff down there. Oh, yeah? Yeah, back in, uh, I used to be a sheriff down in Provo, Utah. Oh, really? Yeah. What made you move up here? Ah, man, it just got got a lot. Got a lot down there, didn't it? So I need, I need some more space. Need some thinking. All that shit's code for racism. All good. Uh, we love everybody equally, even racists. Um, so, yeah, man. Hey guys, let's take a little break. I want to talk to you about ShipStation. It is the most wonderful time of the year, but listen, it's also the most hectic time of year. Uh, everyone puts off shopping until the last minute. It's just what happens. You do it, I do it all the time. And if you have an online store, you know the feeling of getting hit with a ton of orders at once. Okay? Been there. When you're buried in orders and emails from stressed customers, you'll wish you had ShipStation. Trust me. ShipStation turns holiday ship storms into smooth sailing. So you can keep your customers happy and still find time to enjoy some eggnog. Uh, over on my store, we're, we're ready for anything, uh, including the holidays with ShipStation. So it's a huge help. If you have an online e-commerce e store, you just you got to get ShipStation. If you're still using the default shipping option to run your online store, chances are you're putting up with a lot of unnecessary hassle and limiting your potential growth. Uh, you can manage every order from one simple dashboard. It's really great the way they have it set up. And uh, they, you can print shipping, shipping labels and easily compare rates and delivery times to opt optimize every shipment. You keep your customers happy, and it's a really important thing for that. Uh, no one wants to think too hard during the holidays. You want to be with your family, and you want to be, uh, you know, focusing on other things, not work. Well, luckily, ShipStation is a no-brainer. You'll save time, money, and stress during the holiday rush. And when you sign up using my promo code, you'll get even two months to try it free. There you go. All right? So this holiday season, give yourself the gift of stress-free holiday shipping. Use promo code CONGRATS today at ShipStation.com to sign up for your free 60-day trial. That's ShipStation.com, promo code CONGRATS. We took David Sullivan on this trip. He talks too loud in the morning. That's it, period. Talk softer, period. Dude, he came over and we left for the shit. And he was just like, oh, he was on the phone. Can I make a phone call? I was like, sure, man. You know, because I'll tell you what, it is annoying when somebody's on the phone in the car with you. It's not a place to talk on the phone. So asking is cool. But my motherfucker, this is how his phone call goes, for real. Hey, how's it going our, oh, out there? <laughs> yeah, all right. Well, ain't that nice? Yeah, well, I'm going to Cheyenne. And uh, no, I wish I was hunting yak, but I'm not. But so, uh, yeah, y'all good there? I know the fence fell down. Oh, man. You got some weather? All right, well. And dude, it took five minutes, and I and I texted him, you're too loud. He hung up the phone, started laughing because he got the text. It's too loud. Dude, and he talks to everyone. A and it's so annoying because you can't talk to women without thinking that they're gonna they're being hit on. And he'll just be like, beautiful day, isn't it? In an elevator. And I'm just like, no, don't do it, dude. How you doing today? What? Bro, what? A stranger? How you doing today? Me. What? Fine. What do you want, dude? I'm Russian, practically. Don't be smiling at me if you don't know me. But he talks too loud in the morning. People who talk too loud in the morning, I don't want to talk at all in the morning. I, and by the morning, I mean all the way up until 8 p.m. Like, I just, like, let me get going for 12 hours before anybody really bothers me. If you got something you want to say, just text me, you know? I just, it's too much. I really need to be uh, absolutely, uh, I really need to be absolutely fucking a, a better person, right? Because, um, the world doesn't revolve around me, but it kind of, in a way it does, because I am me, right? We could be AI. You guys could be AI. Are you guys tricking me? I want to know really, uh, 
I really, I wouldn't really want to know if we're an AI or not, but it's all good. Um, David and I watched uh, NCIS um, two nights, three nights in a row. Have you ever seen NCIS, man? And I don't mean the original one. I don't know the one with Mark Harmon, really, but I'm talking about the New Orleans one with Lucas, whatever the fuck guy's name is, from uh, Friday Night Lights and Scott Bakula. Scott Bakula was in Quantum Leap, okay? And he is a cool looking dude, whatever. Now in NCIS, there were three times I was watching an episode of of NCIS and I actually had the thought, wait, that is Scott Bakula, right? Because he kind of looks like a guy that looks like Scott Bakula now. And that's what happens when you get older a little bit and that's fine. But he did Quantum Leap. That's what he was really famous for. And then all of a sudden he's on NCIS. Dude, imagine being a guy that was had a a real career in the in the early nineties, and now it's two thousand and I think it fifteen or fourteen is when it started NCIS, and they and they call you thirty years later and they're like, hey Scott Bakula, want to be on the new NCIS? You gotta feel like Scott Bakula must have just been like, uh, oh I'm the luckiest guy in the world, like how could you? Not work for 30 years and then all of a sudden just be given a franchise. I mean, I know he worked and shit and I'm obviously... But like this, NCIS, dude, they make an NCIS out of any city and it becomes a fucking smash hit from jump, dude. NCIS, NCIS Los Angeles, which by the way is still on. That started in like 2007. NCIS is still on. That started in 2003, dude. It's been on for 20 years. Mark Harmon last year was like, you know what? I think I'm going to actually not do it. I'll let the show run without me. Dude, for after 19 years, Mark Harmon worth $400 million, dude. And now he's a producer on all of them. How the fuck does that work, dude? They're just handing money out, you know? So now I'm watching NOLA, NCIS NOLA, and Scott Bakula, dude is in it, and the other Lucas guy is in it, and then two, like, kind of maybe Hispanic women, of course, that we were like, are they Hispanic? And then another dude that's like a tall, lanky white dude that looks like Neil Brennan stretched out, and then another dude that's like a black dude in a wheelchair, and I'm just like, <laughs> yup, dude. Is NCIS stand for not? Nah, come on, insane shit? Dude, this is so regular, this show. The guy's name is Dwayne. Scott Beckler's name is Dwayne Pride, dude. And they call him uh, King. The most badass shit. My name's Dwayne Pride. Yeah, but call me King. So badass, dude. My name is Nut Hugger Chick Fugger, but call me Scrotum. That's the only more badass shit. <laughs> Scrotum tonight at 11. Scrotum on after Magnum PI tonight at 11. Uh, an all new Scrotum. Yeah! <laughs> We're going to have to stretch this case out. And then instead of the sunglasses, just pulling his scrotum. <laughs> Dude. Looks like, looks like this chick, just such bad fucking taglines. Looks like this chick. Hey, you know what? Yeah, I understand that we're at odds. And I, normally I would take this case. But this time, balls are in your court. Yeah! Just t- stretches his scrotum, puts it over his head and flies away. <laughs> Dude. On an all new scrotum. Previously on scrotum. <laughs> Dude. Oh no, look at this. He kneels down. Here, hold my nuts. Hold my nuts. I gotta kneel down and get a closer look. Previously on Scrotum, 
Hold, hold my nuts. I got to get a closer look. Oh, no. This killer is absolutely crazy. It looks like the balls are in his court. Yeah! Um. Oh, no. Here comes Scrotum. God damn it. Oh, here he comes. Oh, hey, Scrotum. How's it going? Looking particularly veiny today. Um. So... Oh, no, this person died in vain. Dude, so dumb. Oh, no, this person, it looks like my, oh, no, my cock's about to spit up. What? That one didn't even make sense. (laughs) Um, Yeah, so we watched NCIS, dude, Dwayne Pride, unreal. And dude, there's a whenever there's a black guy in a wheelchair in a show, I'm just like, all right, dude, you know, I, it's a pushing an agenda. You don't need to be pushing an agenda that hard. How about give a black guy a role? And then also, by the way, I used to like, how dope would it be to be an actor and that's your role? You don't, you just get to sit the fuck down all day. Are you kidding me? The most annoying part as an actor is you got to keep doing the same shit over and over again. And you got to like walk into a room and sit down and get up and walk in it, bro. And normally the time and sometimes the call times are like 6 a.m. Bro, to be the guy to play a paraplegic and just sit down all day and you don't got to do shit. People are just pushing you places. Fuck. Yeah, dude. That is the killer creme de la creme, especially on NCIS. Dude, if you're 60 and you get on NCIS, game over. I would so... Do the out put make let me be the sixth guy. I'm way ahead of you. Make me be that guy that does that every the chick with the pink hair. I'm way ahead of you. Here, look, we found him over on we got the CTC and the fucking um, but yeah, dude, we watch it. And let me tell you a little bit about this NCIS, man, since we're on this, since we're on the subject, dude. Um, he it's a New Orleans dude. It's in New Orleans. It's a show that's in New Orleans. And there it, it, he opened up a unit, a branch of the F- FBI. <laughs> Dude, they like, they like do crack cases in like a fucking, is it, you're like, you're watching it and it's so nice looking. It's like so, such a Hollywood version of what they think the fucking FBI is. And like, it's like, are they cracking cases in a barn? It's like a barn that like some lady on YouTube that would decorate. And there would be a channel, and it would be the, the channel would be called like the barn. And she'd be like, Today at the barn, Dwayne Pride wanted me to decorate for Christmas. So I did a twist, a fancy twist on a New Orleans fucking winter wonderland. Here comes Scrotum now. And so uh so the whole place is like three levels and they got like crazy, of course, like computers and shit. But the best part about it, and by that, I mean the worst part. And by that, I mean the best part is that, dude, they give Dwayne pride. There's like a, it, there's a place called Pride's Kitchen and he cooks for everyone. Oh, dude, it's so fucking horrendous. Every end of the show, he's just, like, making gumbo, and he's just like, there you go. And, dude, it's so funny to think about, like, uh, um, what's his name, Scott Bakula, like, not knowing shit about cooking at all ever, you know? And just, like, yeah, hand me the paprika, we're making andouille, we're making andouille sausage, you know what I mean? All this New New Orleans shit, and it is so fucking, dude, David and I were laughing so fucking hard because we were like, because every time... Scott Bakula would be on a case and he would be like looking pensive. We would be like, got to go get some crawfish. I got to cook for the fucking team, dude. And we would just be laughing, dude, sitting, slaying in the same bed. Look at this. This was my favorite thing. Pride's Kitchen, it's called. Uh, NCIS. And this is the Wiki fan base. This is, I love when, I love when they do. So this is the description for Pride's Kitchen on the Wiki fan base, right? It goes like this. Pride's Kitchen. Is a kitchen in the NCIS... Wait, it went away. Fuck. Is a kitchen in the NCIS 
New Orleans building where the team led by NCIS special agent Dwayne Cassius Pride can go get some food to eat while discussing the case. <laughs> Dude, uh, go get some food to eat, dude. Take more time with the description. <laughs> Dude, go get some food to eat. He's just fucking, we're making crawfish with andouille sausage, man. Dwayne Cassius King Pride. <laughs> Is NCIS special agent in charge of the NCIS New Orleans office and also the leader of the NCIS New Orleans team. He's the ex-husband of Linda Pride, the current husband of Rita Devereaux. I mean, so convoluted. The father of Laurel Pride and the, I mean, dude, you know. I love how in this, because normally it's just like when they did, um, when they did, uh, when they used to do these shows, it used to just be about the case, right? Like Law and Order, you don't have a fucking clue about their dating life. You don't have a clue. Like that Chris Maloney, he could be literally the gayest cop on the weekends. Nobody knows. He's just cracking cases. That's it. He's just walking into rooms like, so what do we got? The guy could literally be taking Molly and fucking twinks all every week. That's the, that's the law and order I want to see. So what do we got? He walks in. Oh, no, I knew him. Oh, shit. We used to run together. Previously on law and order. God damn it. Chris Maloney goes on the weekend, pops a molly, and can't stop fucking. Previously on Law and Order. So what do we got? Oh, I knew him, splurt. I used to run with him. <laughs> Hello. Bringing donuts up previously on Law and Order. Hello. I've got donuts for everyone. I've got cream-filled donuts. Uh-oh. <laughs> Um, but yeah, that's the shit I want to watch, man. And now it's like they try to make a fucking guy in a wheelchair and then have the lead cook as a personality. <laughs> Just leave it at the fucking cases, man. I'm fine with it. You don't need to be all, you know. Oh, God. These movies. They're, they're so, these shows, they're so bad. And they're the number one shows, dude. It's unreal. We're back, went potty. Um. Oh, this thing was insane. Interview gone. He's a ten, gone. but his dad is Andrew Tate. Negative zero. You can make negative zero. I don't know. Random okay. guy walks up. Hey, how you doing? How you doing? Uh, I'm doing great. Las Vegas fucking sucks. Okay, dude. So first of all, Billy Bob Thornton. Second of all, absolutely no. As soon as he walks up, that this is going to take a fucking sour turn. So here we go. Absolutely okay. Las Vegas fucking sucks. Ah. What do you want to know about it? I mean, the way the girl laughed. Ah. I'm, I'm good on that. A lot of people want to fucking take people around here. Okay. What do you want to know about it? I'm good on I'm good on that. Are you? I am. Why are you filming her? Why am I? I asked her to film her. Where yeah. did you? Yeah, I did. did. He asked me. And you're okay with that? Yeah. Because these are fucking assholes. Okay, no, go ahead. I totally. Asked me, I said it was fine. Go ahead. All right. It's all up to you. We Just, already did it. We, <laughs> we already did it, dude. What a time suck this guy is, you know? Like, dude, let me, you're just holding up what's going to be happening. Hey, how's it? Just holding his. Yes, I am. Las Vegas fucking sucks. People take people. Huh? Yeah. We're you're on camera chilling. now, too. I'm fantastically on camera. What? Absolutely foreign, dude. I am fantastically on camera. Always been on camera. I'm a musician. Yeah. I play with bands you fucking don't even know. Not a brag, dude. Not a flex. I play with bands you don't even know because they're not successful. Um. I hate people that take fucking people. Are you that person? No, I'm not. Why would okay, you say that? Because I want to kill them. Because they are all fucking here in Las Vegas. Okay. Okay. okay, I'm not from Las Vegas. Yeah, neither am I. I travel the world. I'm a musician. Yeah. I hate to see people right. taking advantage right, yeah. of people. Bye, guys. Thank you. Awesome. I mean, 
And then she leaves. She says, go do your thing. The guy, like, was trying to already. The way he enters. Interview gone. He's a so 10, but his dad is Andrew Tate. The question, you know. Negative zero. You can make negative zero? This whole thing is know. so insane. Okay. She has a shirt on that says slut. And he's got a hat on. The crazy guy has a hat on that says FCUK. Guy walks up. Hey, uh, how you doing? How you doing? I'm doing great. Las Vegas fucking sucks. <laughs> I'm doing great. Las Vegas fucking sucks. How much has that guy's wife been looking him for him for 30 years? <gasps> what do you want to know about it? I mean, does it? You're not included, guy. I'm, I'm good on that. A lot of people want to fucking take people around here. Dude, this guy is, like, honestly, I, I'll tell you right now, I know a guy like this that isn't like this yet that's going to be like this in 20 years. What do you want to know about it? I'm good on, I'm good on that. Are you? I am. Why are you filming her? Dude, this guy thinks he's being such a bad... He thinks he's Liam Neeson and Taken, and he's wearing a fucking Birds of California shirt and, a, and maroon stained shorts with a bag of what the... I wonder what the fuck is in there. That is absolutely insane. And his leg is bleeding. Wow, his leg is bleeding, dude. Why am I? I asked her to film her. Where yeah. did you? I did. I mean, wow. God, it's just so much sadness out there, mental health, huh? It's so sad. But you know what? It's like people say uh, you got to give people a pass when they have mental health. But then also, if you really think about it, definitely Nazis were suffering from mental health. And look what they uh, fucking accomplished. So, you know. Maybe also take it seriously, even if they're saying bullshit. Um, yeah, so I uh, I did my show. Speaking of, actually, speaking of Nazis, let me go to this. KFC apologizes after German Crystal Knocked promotion. Um, it's fried chicken. Let me look up Crystal Knocked. I, I know it's bad, but I'm not I'm not too clear on what it is. Uh, Crystal Knocked. Oh wow. Okay, the first thing that came up was Crystal Knocked. 2022 so that's probably going to be something very bad um crystal knocked if for those of you that don't know what it is on november 9th 10th 1938 nazi leaders unleashed a series of pogroms against the jewish population in germany and recently incorporated territories this event came to be called crystal knocked the night of broken glass because of the shattered glass that littered the streets after the vandalism and destruction of jewish owned businesses synagogues and homes so kfc was like Let's make chicken. KFC has apologized after sending a promotional message to customers in Germany, urging them to commemorate Crystal Knocked with cheesy chicken. This is the most stay in your lane fucking thing of all time. The Nazi led series of attacks in 1938 left more than 90 people dead and destroyed Jewish owned businesses and places of worship. It is widely seen as the beginning of the Holocaust. The message, heavily criticized for insensitivity, was later blamed on an error in our system. I mean, so over... The fast food chain said an app alert on Wednesday saying, it's Memorial Day for Kristallnacht. Treat yourself with a more tender cheese on your crispy chicken now at KCF... At KF Cheese. Ah! Around an hour later, another message was sent with an apology according to the builders. <laughs> What was the error? What was the er error? Someone hit the Nazi button? What was there? Oh, uh, sorry. Dude, it's hilarious if you... First of all, it's hilarious if you have the KFC app. Okay? Second, it's hilarious that there's a KFC app. Third, it's hilarious that they alert you to anything. Fourth, they alerted you to Crystal Knocked. By trying to sell cheesy chicken and five or six, whatever we're on, they apologize an hour later. Oops, sorry. Celebrate Crystal Knocked with cheesy chicken. And you're like, that's kind of weird. And then, sorry. Hey, sorry at KFC. Um, oh, God, I, I love shit like this, man. The world's fake. The fast food chain said the automated push notification was linked to calendars that include national observances. All right, fair enough. But then where's the Boxing Day one, you know? Where's the Kwanzaa one? Did they give you one for that? 
Hey, today we celebrate the K, the fucking KKK with our KKK crispy chicken. Come on out and take a bite of our KKK crispy chicken. KKKFC. Um, unreal. I was at the. Uh, I did a show at the Hollywood Improv last night, and it was really sweet, man. I went to dinner with my uh, my business manager and this investment dude that I I, 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 I work with, um, good guys, really good guys, had a great time. We went to this place called Laurel Hardware, and then it was way too sceney, dude. You know the place is way too sceney when there's like, you know, like if there was like a group of way too fashionable people outside of it, and... Um, and it was seen, sounded like it was loud. We were gonna go to uh, Laurel Hardware, and then my buddy was like, "Nah, we're gonna actually. It's, this is what you don't want." Because I said I didn't want it to be sceney, and then we went over to, um, what do you call it? Uh, I went over to. Uh, we went over to Delilah, which is across the street. Delilah has good food, man. We got the fried chicken. It wasn't crystal knocked, but we got the fried chicken anyway. We got the fried chicken sandwiches, and they were really fucking good. Delilah's pretty pretty cool. Uh, I maybe have been there once before. Um, and then I went and, and we took, I took them to my show. We did, sh I, I did a show and, uh, as I was getting my car out of the valet, this dude comes up to me and he says, Hey man, I can't believe I'm seeing you, but I was supposed to go to your show tonight at the Melrose improv in Hollywood. And I got it for the wrong date. And he, he, he looked and he showed me the ticket and it said for a different date than what my actual show was on, which was this night. And he said, and it's just so weird. I just started walking from the improv and now I'm right here and I'm staring at you. And it's so crazy because it's better that I get to see you and meet you than it is to even go to your show. I said, oh, well, let's take a, take a picture with me. He said, oh, man, awesome. I took a picture with him and he sent it to his buddy. And then he, I was like, dude, I was like, are you go? Do you have anybody that you were going to go with? He was like, I was supposed to go with my buddy, but he bailed on me. And I was like, well, why don't you just go? I, I can get you in. I mean, I know it's sold out, obviously, because your boy is your boy, but you can, I'll put you on the list. And he was like, really? And I said, yeah. And I fucking got him a ticket. And he, sh and I'm on, then I get on stage. And I'm on stage, I see, I look over to the right, he's there sitting alone, and it was really fucking sweet, dude. And it made me feel really good, and I'm glad I ran into him. He made a fucking mistake, he wasn't going to be in town, he's from Las Vegas. Las Vegas fucking sucks, I hate when people take people. But, um, yeah, he went to Las Vegas, and, uh, or he was in Las Vegas, and then he was at my show, and serendipitous... Lee, he fa 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 he ran into me, and then there we go. He was at my show, and it felt so nice for the guy, dude. I was really happy about it. So there. And you know what? That's the end of the motherfucking story, dude. Too low. Um, but it was beautiful. And then after my show, this woman comes up to me and just says, Hi, Chris. And I say, Hi. And she just broke down in tears. And I said, No, no, no. Why are you crying? And she was like, she actually said, we're, we're, we're in the middle of the doorway. And I was like, that's okay. You don't have to cry. And she was like, no, but I think we're in the way. And so I was like, oh, come outside. So we went outside and she was like, you've, you've, you've helped me with my OCD. I have OCD and it's really bad. And I'm terrified of flying. And, and, and I was like, oh, I'm sorry you're there, but I'm happy to be there for you. I'm glad you listened to the podcast and my comedy and shit. And then she was like, uh, but bawling. And I was like, let's take a picture. We took a picture. And then she says, I have something for you. And she hands me a coffee bean and tea leaf uh, gift card. And it was the sweetest fucking thing, man. It was so sweet. She was like, it's weird. Like I know you, but I, I, I don't really know you, but I know you like coffee bean and I wanted to do something for you. So here you go, dude. And it touched my heart, man. It just touched my heart. And I, you know, my, I talk about OCD a lot here on this podcast or a, a bunch, you know, I have OCD and, uh, you know, it's always a little bit weird talking about it because I feel like I'm exposing myself to you. That's not sexual, but uh, yeah, I just uh, uh, fight the good fight, man. OCD is a real tough thing, and um, my heart goes out to those people who have it and anyone dealing with mental health. Um, I really uh, have, I don't know what, but I've turned a corner, and I really like and I enjoy meeting fans. You know, sometimes it's annoying, right? But somebody flew in from Egypt to go to a show, and somebody was in from South uh, Korea. I was like, Jesus Christ. Uh, I guess I'm going to have to do a, sh a show out there in fucking Cambodia or wherever the fuck it is. Um, but yeah, 
I don't know, dude. That was the end of the episode for YouTube. If you want the raw, uncut version, the U- the uh, the one the version that's not on YouTube, go on over to our Patreon at Chris, uh, patreon.com slash Chris D'Elia, and you can listen to the rest of the episode, raw and uncut, no ads. And you can also um, listen to all the extra episodes that have been in the past. I think there's about 18 of them now, maybe even 19. I don't know. But go on over, uh, Chris... Uh, Patreon.com slash Chris and thanks for watching.